Hi, and welcome to Train Signal. We're continuing our discussion of failover cluster technologies with an exploration of backup and restore logic. Our failover clusters are going to store information about a wide number of applications running in our environment. That backup and restore environment is going to be uh, important to be able to help support this failover cluster high availability configuration that we've deployed. It's great to have highly available applications, but what happens if a dramatic event occurs and we damage some large quantity of the equipment or we somehow misconfigure the information that's inside the cluster. How do we get it back to an earlier stable state that we like better than the state in which the system finds itself currently? Backup and restore helps enable that ability. So we're going to focus on that here in this section. Our main technology for that purpose is a backup utility. Uh, you can use any of a variety of different tools. Microsoft recommends, of course, Windows Server Backup, which is a fine starting point. There are many companies that will quickly move to another third-party backup and restore software solution, and of course that's perfectly fine. What's most important is that whatever the backup tool is that we use, that it provides support for something called Volume Shadow Copy Services, or VSS. Volume Shadow Copy is an idea that became part of the server family of OSs back with Windows Server 2003 and its intent is to do something somewhat clever. By way of analogy, you go to a diner, you sit down at a table, waitress brings you a cup of coffee and a slice of pie, and you're just about to dig in when that person says, oh, wait a minute, I forgot to clean your table. How about, would you just pick up your cup of coffee and your slice of pie for a second and I'll wipe the table for you. You pick up your stuff and whoosh, the table gets cleaned, and everything goes back right to the state that it was. That's a little bit of a snapshot of what happens when Shadow Copy tries to do backups. Backups run into a couple of interesting challenges. The first major one of which is that in a lot of cases, the information that I want to back up is currently being used by somebody. The application is in use. It's got open files. It's writing to those files. It's reading from files. And in a lot of cases, I can't directly read from a file that an application is actively writing into, because if we do, we'll store an incomplete version of that file, one that only contains some of the content that was meant to be put into that file. If I restore the file back to that incomplete state, it's probable that that file is corrupted. It's not a workable file that can be used by the application if I were to restore it back to that particular instant in time. So what I need is to be able to make a backup of data at a consistent point in time, at some point in the past where it made perfect sense to the application for that file to be in that particular state. So how do we do that? Well, what we need is something kind of like the wait person asking you to pick up all of your things and hold them for a second while the table gets wiped. We need a way for a backup application to ask a, a program that's writing to, to a file to pause for a moment, put all the files that it's working with into a stable state of some sort so that we can do a quick snapshot of what that environment looks like at that point in time and let the application resume running. And in so doing, we create something called a shadow copy. Volume Shadow Copy Services works in such a way that any time a file is modified or deleted, the blocks of data in the file that got changed or were removed are not thrown away permanently. They are moved into a separate area of storage on that same drive controlled by Volume Shadow Copy Services. That means that I can take that data about the changes that have been made and the existing files in their currently changed state, and between those two things, I can reconstruct an earlier point in time for that set of data. I know what that file looked like earlier. Some of you may have used this feature with a Windows feature called Previous Versions. I can roll back a text file, a document of some sort, back to an earlier point in time, and that's because the system contains not only a current version of the file in its current state, but also the information about how it got to that state from some earlier state. Now, how is that important to us here? The Windows Server Backup Utility contains what's referred to as a VSS requester. It is able to issue a request to an application and say, hey, put your data into a stable state so that I can take a snapshot of that so I can take a picture of a stable state for that application so that I can then go back it up later. That request is received by 
in our case here, the failover cluster software. We're trying to do a backup of our failover cluster, but there are lots of applications that have this feature. The feature on the application side is called a VSS Writer, W-R-I-T-E-R. -E the VSS Writer has the job of writing whatever is necessary into the files that the application cares about to put it into, again, a stable state so that I can take a backup of all those files in that state and then let the application resume running. So that will give us the ability to capture all the data about our cluster, store it to a backup in such a way that we have a perfect, consistent set of data about that cluster that I can restore back to at a later point in time. That restore process takes one of two forms. That backup is either an authoritative restore or it's a non-authoritative restore. The non-authoritative restore is a classical sort of a backup. Consider a scenario where the operating system on one of our field over cluster nodes becomes corrupted. The system's unbootable. I want to be able to restore that field over cluster node back to a workable state. But the correct information about the way the cluster is behaving is still in the working nodes of the cluster. I might be making legitimate changes to the way the cluster behaves. That information needs to be uh, preserved in the running nodes in the cluster. When I go restore my dead server, I go take my backup and reapply it to the new hard drive of the server that had the problem. That server doesn't have a complete copy of the original information about the cluster, but it just has the fact that it was a cluster member. That cluster node will learn the correct information about the cluster from the other cluster nodes as it resynchronizes with that environment. Authoritative restore is a way of restoring data about a cluster to a cluster server in such a way as to overwrite all the information that's in the other cluster nodes that are currently operating at that particular moment. This is a way of saying the way the cluster as configured currently on those other servers is wrong, the right way for it to be is what's in the backup. And I want to authoritatively restore that information in such a way that says let's put that back exactly where it was at this point in time throwing away any changes that have taken place since that point. Make sure that you know when it's an appropriate time to do an authoritative restore because potentially if you use it at the wrong time you could be overwriting the current write configuration with an older less desirable configuration. So let's go ahead and demonstrate this on our failover cluster and validate that we can backup and restore cluster configuration data to a known point in time. So here we are on server 2. This is one of my failover cluster nodes. I want to be able to make a backup of the way this thing is configured. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and use Windows Server Backup because it's free. Let me go ahead and install that. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to go ahead and install it by way of PowerShell. I'm going to go get Windows Features whose name contains the word back like part of the word backup. And there is one called Windows Server Backup. I want to install that. So I'm going to take that Windows Server Backup component and feed it to the install dash Windows feature commandlet. And I want to ensure that I install any sub features if they're there and I want to include management tools if they're appropriate. Some of you will note that that's the same behavior that you see in the server manager GUI. When you go install some component, it'll ask you, do you want the management tools that go with it also? That's not surprising in light of the fact that Server Manager does almost all of its work through PowerShell. The same is true, by way of example, for the Active Directory Administrative Center tool that we use in order to configure AD in a Windows Server 28R2 in later environment. Of course, we can still use Active Directory users and computers, but if you've attended the section on claims-based management of uh, Active Directory user accounts, you're aware that there are some things that can only be done in the Active Directory Administrative Center GUI. Everything the ADAC does rests on PowerShell as well. There we go. We've successfully installed the backup tool. So having installed Windows Server Backup, I can go ahead and launch it. The GUI version of this tool will be perfectly adequate to the job of backing up the cluster. Once it's backed up, though, we'll see that the recovery process, the authoritative restore that I'll need to do, is going to require the assistance of the command line version of the utility.
So having started the GUI, I can go launch a backup. I'm going to do the backup once option. A backup schedule would be a fine choice, but uh, in this case I'm just going to do the one backup. But in real world, a series of backups is a very logical thing to do. I get my choice here to resume using backup options I've used in a scheduled backup. If I set one, I haven't, so I get to create my own from scratch here. First choice is what to back up. I can back up the whole server, or I can pick and choose particular pieces of it, choosing particular drives, backing up those elements of the system that seem necessary for the purposes of this particular backup process. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and do a full system backup that is going to include, importantly, the applications that are an important part of what we're doing here. It wants to know where I want to back up to, and I'm going to choose a shared folder on the other side of my network. I created a shared folder for this purpose on New York City Server 1. And I'll back up to that location. So this next part of the video is going to take a, a minute or two here, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to push the magic train signal button, and this is now going to run much faster than it would in real life. Okay, so we successfully completed the backup. I can see it appears in my GUI here. Let's create a scenario that would deserve restoring that backup. Let me go do some damage to my failover cluster. So here's my failover cluster. I'm going to go right click my running DHCP failover environment. And I want to go get some properties on it. So I'm going to go click here and whoops, I clicked a little bit too early and clicked remove instead. Now, being Microsoft, they politely provide me with a, are you sure you want to do this dialog box? So I'm very grateful for that because, yes, I definitely want to prevent that removal. So I'll click yes, I don't want to do that that removal. Whew, boy, am I glad they gave me the option to say yes, I don't want to. Uh-oh, wait a minute. I said yes, I want to res I want to destroy it. And uh, I watch helplessly as the failover cluster software dutifully does its job of dismantling all the hard work that I did building a DHCP failover cluster, and it's gone. Now what do we do? Well, what we do now, of course, is we restore our backup. The mechanism with which we go do so is going to be important. If I try to use the GUI normally, we get partway through that process, and then we hit a roadblock. Let me illustrate. Let me go take my backup tool and attempt to recover from my backup. You must know where's the backup that I'm going to recover from. I've got it stored at another server. And in that share, it sees a backup that could be restored from today's date. I can do any of a bare metal recovery, a restore of certain locations, or indeed the cluster database. So I would like to do that. So I would go Applications, and I want to go ahead and restore the cluster. I click Next. It says, OK, you can recover it to some other location. You just can't put it back where it came from. Hmm, I can't do a authoritative restore here. I could do a complete bare metal recovery of the server, restore the entire server back to where it was, including this data, but I can't just restore the cluster alone using the GUI. The technique for restoring this correctly is actually going to be the command line version of the Windows backup tool, wbadmin.exe. So let me close out of my recovery console here. And I'll drop to a PowerShell prompt. And let's explore wbadmin.exe. The Windows Backup Administration tool does allow me to issue command line instructions to perform operations that are relevant to our work uh, in Backup and Restore. Specifically, I've got a command that would allow me to go get versions of backups that the current backup server is aware of. So let me go ahead and run wbadmin get versions. And it sees a backup that took place today uh, and it uses a version identifier which contains the date and time information. So if I want to I can go get more information about that particular backup by getting a list of items contained in a backup identified by a particular version. If I say wbadmin get items it invites me to use a version property to identify which particular backup I'm caring about. wbadmin get items dash version and I can paste that in because I 
wisely and cleverly press the enter key when I highlighted that piece of text. And I need a colon between the piece of information I want and the data that identifies it. There we go. So there's my description of my backup. I can see when the backup took place. I can see that we backed up full volumes here and there. And hey, it looks like we backed up an application called Cluster. So what I'd like to do is to restore that item. So how do I get that data back? Well, if you go back and look at the help text about the execution of this tool, we have a start recovery utility. So let's try WB admin start recovery. When we do, it says, hey, that's not quite right either because we need to be more explicit about what it is that we intend to restore, including things like identifying what type of item we want to restore and which particular item in that collection we want to restore using that particular item type. Well, it turns out I do want something from the application type. You saw that in the GUI. The item we saw in our earlier retrieval of item information is called cluster. So my next command is wbadmin start recovery dash version colon I can paste in my timestamp information dash item type colon app on application data which particular application I want a member of the items collection whose name is cluster you've chosen to recover the cluster database exactly right how do I do it I get my choice of doing an authoritative restore. Do I want to intend to do that? Yes, this is what I want to do. I want to perform an authoritative restore of the cluster database, which is to say this server is going to be telling all the other cluster servers, trust me, mine is the right copy. Now Microsoft is going to actually suggest as part of this process that we go back to our failover cluster tool and stop the cluster service on any other cluster nodes other than the one that we're restoring our data to. So I'm going to go ahead and stop server 3's cluster service. So that's now down. Now I can proceed with my restoration of the cluster database onto server 2. You'll recall that we made a change to our environment to remove the DHCP failover cluster role. I have no such role on my system, at least as of the moment. Server 2 is up, server 3 is down no roles appear to be present. People are calling the help desk saying, hey, how come I can't get an IP address? We're going to fix that. In our command line version of the backup tool, we are, yes, going to perform an authoritative restore. There we go. It says it successfully recovered the cluster database. It invites me to start the cluster service on this node if it's not started. It invites me to start the cluster service on the other nodes that are part of the cluster. And we're in good shape, it says. So let's go see if that's true. Let me jump over to my failover cluster manager. If I open up the details of my cluster, click the roles collection, and we'll see if I go click my nodes container. Server 3 is still offline. I need to restart that cluster service on server 3 and server 3 is back online. So I've been able to recover from inadvertent uh, or sometimes intentional, if the case may be, damage to my failover cluster with the use of the very elementary Windows Server Backup utility. Certainly it's possible to use third-party backup tools for this purpose. That's a perfectly sensible thing to do as well. But in the event that you don't have one of those tools handy, even the simple Windows Server Backup utility is adequate to be able to backup and recover failover cluster functionality. I hope that information will be helpful to you in administration of your failover clusters. I look forward to sharing more information with you in our next lesson.